All right, what's up, guys? I just got done playing soccer and got home. And on the Discord, somebody was asking for a tutorial from our Too Tall Toby practice models library. You can see we've got over 200 challenges in here, and one of them is 250807. So let's make a tutorial using SolidWorks. Here we go. Click here to begin. Toby, SolidWorks, United States, and go. So the question here is, what is the mass of this part? And if you're on the website, you can open this in a new window and you can get started. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get this main kind of outer shape. I'm going to add in this hole here with the wall thickness. And then I'm probably going to create these hexes as their own body. And then once I create them as their own body, I'll do like a Boolean subtract or uh, some type of like a Boolean merge at the end. So I'll probably do this as kind of a multi-body challenge. So here we go. Open in new window. We'll take this window here, we'll move it over to our second screen, and then we will take this and just move it over here so you can see the clock. Average time here is nine minutes, 26 seconds. Let's beat the average, baby. So here we are in SolidWorks. We're gonna go new. Looks like this part is in ABS and millimeters, right? ABS and millimeters, yep, that's what it says on the title block. So ABS and millimeters got my template here. Uh, let's go to top plane. Begin a sketch, orient our view, S key, center point rectangle, single click here, move our mouse. Looks like it's going to be 165 high by 196 wide. And then we've got some radii on the corner, 14 millimeters, so 14. And then you can do a window here, window all four of them at once and get all four corners in one shot. It's a nice little shortcut. S key extrude. We're going to bring this up to a height of eight millimeters. Enter, enter. Pick this face here, begin a sketch, S key. Uh, I'll do this as a circle, um, and we'll make that diameter 26. So it's like the OD for that circle. And then the location of this circle is from this wall, 28. And from this wall up top here, 44. So we can go control five to get to a top view if you want to see what that sketch looks like. S key extrude and right click through wall, right click. That gets that guy through wall. Then we're going to go to the shell command and pick this face here and give it a wall thickness of four millimeters, four millimeters everywhere on that thing, including that hole there. And that looks pretty good. That hole looks like it's a little too close. Did I put that diameter wrong? Let's see, 18 through 26. Oh, there. oh yeah, 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 that is wrong. Okay, here we go. This should be 18. And then um, rebuild. And then if I click on this wall here and I look down on the status bar, that wall has a diameter of 26. There we go. There we go, making some changes on the fly. So now I can pick this face here, begin a sketch, S key, begin a sketch, and get normal two, control eight, and then I can create my first hex. And you'll notice that on the print, they do give you a little bit of a hint. They say, try locating the center of this hex first. So we locate this hex here at 28 over, and then we locate this hex here at... Uh, 58 down, whoops, 58 down from here, 58. And then uh, this line here is vertical. So it's, the hex is vertical this way, whoops. Got a bad dimension there, uh, bad relationship. Got to stay out of those bad relationships, you know. And then you can see here that this has got a interior diameter of 26 or 26 hex and so then at this point you can either extrude that with thin feature or you could just offset it i probably would just offset it just because it makes it a little easier to visualize my sketch so the wall on the internal hex web is two millimeters all around two millimeters for everything and then just make this circle here for construction as well so what's nice here is that now we can take that geometry and we can extrude it and then we can extrude that up with the merge result unselected, unselect merge result there. And we can just bring it right up to this face here. So I could double click on that face and that changes it to up to surface. It's a little bit of an older trick. You can only do that in the older versions of SolidWorks. This is SolidWorks 2020 here. So um, extrude it up to surface. If you don't have that trick, if it's, you know, if you're using a newer version, then you could right click and say up to surface, pick that surface and then right click to finish. Either way, give yourself a new body there. So you've got the shell as one body, and then you've got the hex as the other body. And then from here, what I usually do is a linear pattern, um, and usually you have to do it in two or sometimes three different linear patterns. I know the question was, can you do it as a hex pattern? I'm sorry, can you do it as a fill pattern? And I think that probably the only way you could really pull this off as a fill pattern would be to maybe... Uh, make an outer boundary. I don't know of another way to do it um, because we're trying to kind of fill it into the, you know, in, into this internal interior shape here or this interior shape here. 
you would probably fill it and then fill to a larger, like fill in hexes all out here also, and then cut them away. That's kind of what I'm going to do with the pattern anyway. So um, you, I'm sure you could do it with a fill pattern, but I'm not going to. I'm going to do it with a linear pattern. So linear pattern uh, for direction one, I'll pick this direction. For direction two, I'll pick this direction um, and then flip it here so it's going the other way. And then the direction one spacing is going to be, I think it's 26. It might be 22. Direction two, it's going to be 26. And then down here, I'll pick bodies. So you're going to go down here to bodies two pattern and the body will be this hex body here. And then just look at the preview and you can see if you got the right number. So no, I did not get the right number. So this should be 30. Nope, should be 28. There we go, to account for that four millimeter wall thickness. A little bit difficult to see here. Maybe I'll change the color of my part to make that a little easier to see. But there you can see kind of what's happening. So I'm just going to over pattern this. And then I'm going to do the same thing in the other direction. Because when I'm done with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create a second pattern that goes down in this direction. So um, for that second direction, that will also be 28. And then we will bring that down using the pattern seed only option. This is really important because by default in SolidWorks, what you get is a pattern of a pattern. So we, you know, we create the pattern here going in the first direction. And then we take that entire pattern, we scoop it up and we go in the second direction. That's great when you're making a grid. So you pattern over this way. And then if if you wanted a grid of nine, you would take that pattern of three and pattern it down in this direction. But that's not what we want here. We just want it to go the seed only in that second direction. So pattern seed only, and then make that value the same 28. Okay. And so now we've got a bunch of bodies here in the tree and we're about to have a bunch more. And so now we're going to create a pattern in this direction. Now, one thing you can do to accomplish this is you can go back to that original sketch of the hex. So we could call this here hex shape one, um, go back to that original sketch of the hex and you can just drop in a line there. So if you drop in a line that goes from here to the midpoint of the hex, maybe something like that, then that's going to give you the perfect direction for that pattern, really the direction in both ways. So so you could have that direction one and direction two. So if we exit the sketch and then we show that that uh, sketch there of the hex, then we can take that that uh, sketch and we can use that to drive the direction of the pattern. So the pattern here is going to go direction one, like so. And then the items to pattern is going to be bodies to pattern here. It's going to be this body. Really, it's going to be all of them. But if you just pick the one, you can kind of see if the spacing is going to work. And look at that, 28 works really well for that spacing as well. And so then what we would do is we would say um, for direction two, pattern seed only, we'll pick on this same edge here pick the same edge here for pattern direction two, reverse the direction. And there we go. Now we see we're going in that second direction as well. And so down here where we say bodies to pattern, we're going to pick all of these hexes here. So you can see that we are over uh, patterning this thing. We're trying to overfill. We're trying to make sure that we're covering everything. And really that's enough right there. I don't actually need that last one. And then going over here in this direction, let's see, that's enough right there. I don't need any more than that. So certainly I could go back and refine that original pattern, but it's not really necessary. We're going to cut away everything anyway. So the final thing I would do here, maybe just for performance, is I would kind of dial these down a little bit just to make sure that I'm overfilling everything and hit the green check mark and boom, that takes care of that pattern. Now, honestly, at this point, just to make things a little bit easier for the cut, I would probably take this very first body here, hex shape one, and see here, this is shell. That's the underlying body. I'll take this hex shape one here, and then I'm going to hold shift, and I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom here, pick this very bottom body, then I'm going to let go of shift, and I'm going to right-click. So I've selected all 80 bodies there, right-click, combine, and then that's going to be a combine add. And what that does is it just turns all those individual hexes into one body, and that just makes this next step a little bit easier. So now when we get to, whoops, Wait, I didn't mean to get that very first, didn't mean to get the shell, right click, delete the shell. I did not mean to include that, that was an accidental click there. So there we go, now we've got the shell as one body and we've got the combine as another body. So now I could pick on this face here, begin a sketch and I can do a convert entities and then I could also do um, this edge here, just this edge of the circle here right there, convert entities. So if I hide the shell, you can see what that um, sketch looks like. So I just converted the, the lower face of the shell, the lower inside face of the shell. And then I also converted the circle there, which is on the outside face of that um, circular boss. And so now I'm gonna take that geometry and I'm gonna say features extruded cut. And then the extruded cut is gonna go through all 
And then for the through wall, I'm going to say flip side to cut. So normally if I did a through wall, I would be removing everything that's kind of on the inside of this boundary. But if I say flip side to cut, then that's going to remove everything on the outside of the boundary. And then I'll just reverse the direction so you can see the preview, hit the check mark, and oh yeah, that cleaned up nice. Oh, almost. That almost cleaned up nicely. I got a little too excited there. So we created the cut here from the bottom face here. So when we did the cut and we did through all, we removed the boundary or the, the border there of the shell. Well, all we have to do is here in the cut we could do right mouse button edit feature we just have to go down here to the feature scope so which bodies are going to be affected by that cut extrude not the shell <laughs> don't affect the shell ignore the shell so right click delete the shell so it is not affected that's what feature scope does so the cut extrude only affects the bodies that have the the hex in it that combine which is the body of the hexes so we hit the check mark there there we go that's what we wanted uh, let's hide this sketch here so i'll right click on it and choose the eyeball and finally i will take these two bodies here pick one hold control pick the other let go of control and then i'll right click and i'll choose combine now, I know this is a timed trial, but I think it's always important to rename your features. So I'm just going to take a minute here and go through the tree, and we'll call this one Main Rounded Base. Uh, and then we will go to this next feature here, which is the Hole. And then we'll go to this next feature, which is the Shell. I probably don't need to rename that. The Hex Shape, uh, we'll call this one Hex Pattern 1. Hex Pattern 1. We'll call this one Hex Pattern 2. Hex pattern two we'll call this one hex pattern combine or we could just call it combine hex shapes something like that shapes and then we would call this one cut probably call this something like cut away hex shapes and then this would be here the final combine final combine so like i said i know it's a time trial but you know we're trying to teach people best practices here on the platform and it is absolutely a best practice to rename your features i'm going to go in here to my my uh, feature here that says sensors i'm going to hold control and press q do a control q for a final rebuild here updates the mass here to 158.1 what is the mass of this part in xxx.x grams let's try it here 158.1 and enter and Oh yeah, we got it correct. So our answer there was 158.1 grams, and that is correct, 11 minutes, 48 seconds. CAD system is SolidWorks, and we choose Submit, and that gets us one more point, and it gets us one step closer to completing all of the models that are in the library. That always feels good. Now, we were a little bit slower than the average time, so maybe we could use the Try Again function here to go through and to uh, update and get uh, a faster time, try and beat that average time. I always try to beat that average time, but you can see here that under Data and Analytics, now that I've completed that model, I can scroll down here and I can share my two tutorial video with the community and so that is what i'm going to do next i'll edit this video i'll post it on youtube and then i will share that with the community and if you enjoyed this tutorial let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or if you're stuck on this model let me know that down in the comments as well and if you learned anything cool from this tutorial be sure to hit the like button be sure to subscribe and of course let me know what you learned down in the comments as well and i'll see you in the next tutal toby tutorial